Uh, there's a video that shows how to perform a central venous angiogram. Um, this patient, as you see, had a defibrillator on the left side, um, had some swelling of the head and neck, um, had occlusions of the uh, lower arm uh, veins on the right side. The question really here was, could we actually cross the occlusion? Uh, and if that was the case, then we'd subsequently make arrangements to remove the defibrillator leads uh, and then angioplasty and possibly stent the severe vena cava. So here you can see uh, we're accessing it fairly high up. You can see relatively slow flow, you know, in the compressible uh, vein. Uh, again, we're, we use ultrasound for access essentially for every uh, case. And what we're going to do here is basically just put a five French sheath uh, in whatever we feel is the most uh, easily accessible portion of the vein. So once again, we always use a uh, micropuncture kit uh, in order to gain access. That way, even an anticoagulated patient, we can avoid sticking the artery and we feel that we can do this uh, very safely. Ultrasound is always set up on the opposite side of the table. You can see that we've got access into this, put in the sheath. And uh, you can see these upper arm veins are uh, adequate, but uh, and Peyton, what really interested in is the central vein circulation. Here you can see these defibrillator wires which are coming in really from the opposite side. Uh, now we've centered um, on the uh, central part of the chest. Uh, using digital subtraction and geography, you can see that there is flow superior vena cave approximately as patent, but we don't really get really good at pacification. So we exchange this out really for a sheath that allows you to put a catheter a little more centrally and to inject this directly. Uh, you can't really see where the occlusion is at this point in time, but you can see a whole bunch of collaterals which are coming off the lateral chest and reflux going up uh, into the, um, uh, the jugular venous system uh, on the right. Next step then is to advance a wire. Uh, sheath is then being placed. The wire you can see preferentially tends to go up into the, um, the jugular system. This is the 035 angle glide wire. Uh, often you can uh, manipulate this. And here you can see it's going along and buckling really at the level of the occlusion. So we wanted to get a, a better picture. And here you can see that the um, wire actually went through really without a whole lot of trouble. Um, buckle back up again. So what we're doing now is placing the sheath. Then we'll advance a catheter over that. We use that really to steer the wire. And now you can see we've actually got the wire across it and went across without even putting and the sheath up there. That's a good sign in terms of being able to cross it. And now we're going to head and do a better central uh, venous uh, venogram. Catheter is being brought up. Problem to use a catheter is you've actually got to sacrifice that wire, but we've essentially proven what we need to know, and that is that um, we can actually cross this lesion. See the catheter, we pull the wire back, run and inject through the catheter and the severe vena cava. Just determine what the collaterals are going to look like. That's a pigtail catheter that's placed in the severe vena cava. Typically, we'll use a pressure injection of about 400 millimeters of mercury and 15 for 15 give you a nice clean picture and now you can see uh, just collaterals uh, coming down through that and a short segment stenosis now we're actually pacifying the distal speed vena cava so two pieces of information are no, um, number one can you cross that number two uh, what are the proximal distal areas for potentially landing a stent so this was really done as a diagnostic study uh, and we'll come back another day uh, because it's a lot of work to actually remove the defibrillator and then potentially not even be able to cross the stenosis. Uh, so that's just an example of how we would evaluate a process like this. Thank you.